Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back, or not welcome back if you're new here. Um, I kind of imagine that there might be some diesel people here. Um, fair warning, this is not a diesel channel. Um, you will not see me building diesel trucks on here, so if you're here for anything diesel related or whatever, um, this probably isn't for you. But anyways, uh, for you guys who are subscribers, you may have seen about a month ago, I bought a 99 F250, um, it's a 7.3 five speed i bought it because it was a pretty decent deal off of a buddy of mine and the intention was i was basically going to clean it up over the coming months and use it um, and then sell it in the new year when i find the right excursion um, things happened a lot sooner than i was expecting and that f250 was really not ideal for any kind of long road trip it was very loud and kind of thrown together and just not comfortable um so i made a move i found the perfect excursion actually local to me and you know had some talks with the guy and he ended up taking my f-250 in on trade because he wanted a beta truck um, and so the deal worked out absolutely perfect um, and i now have my dream truck so if you guys couldn't tell or if you are new here um or if it isn't obvious i'm british um, I know that my accent kind of goes in and out a little bit. I've lived in the US for about five years and lived in Kentucky for about two and a half. And unfortunately, I have to sound kind of American to live here. Otherwise, people have absolutely no idea what I'm saying. And I just feel like an idiot all of the time repeating myself. So I have to kind of adapt and it sucks. It's like kind of a identity crisis, but yes, I am British. Anyways, um, I grew up in England, about an hour east of London, and there was an American import place that would ha always have huge trucks and Mustangs and all kinds of stuff, and that's kind of where my love for American cars came from. Um, my dad used to take me up there on the weekends just to see some stuff, and you know, I'd see Dodge Rams, big four pickup trucks and stuff like that. And I always fell in love with excursions because they were huge, like the pickup trucks were, like I couldn't see over the hood, and. You know, I'm 5'8 now, I can still barely see over the hood, but I fell in love with them because they seemed so much bigger than the pickup trucks just because of the extra um, add-on at the back. And ever since I was like eight or nine years old, I've really wanted one. Since moving to the US, I've wanted one even more. And now, I've kind of gotten to the point with my business that I actually need one. So I've managed to justify the cost and thankfully they're at a point where the depreciation is pretty low and they're probably not going to depreciate any further which is pretty much where i like to buy vehicles anyway um so yeah without further ado i have bought a 2003 ford excursion and here it is Now, before my comment section gets completely flooded with people asking, what motor is it? Is it a V10? I hope you didn't get a V10. Or 7.3 or 6.0. Uh, are you going to lift it? Blah, blah, blah. I will answer all of those questions. Let's get into this. So, it is a 2003 Ford Excursion, as I mentioned. It's an Eddie Bauer edition, which, to be honest with you, I had no idea what that was. Since I bought this thing, Last Friday, I've been making jokes all weekend long about how the first owner's name was Eddie, and for some reason he put his name all over the truck. Eddie Bauer is actually some kind of fishing company or something, and this is like the top of the line edition that they came out with, so it has all the bells and whistles, or blah blah blah. All a bunch of useless shit to me. I really couldn't care less, although the features are nice, I just, who the fuck is Eddie Bauer? Anyways, on to the motor. It is a diesel. It is not a 7.3. I feel like at this point, there's probably a whole bunch of people that are gonna click off the video because they're like, oh, fuck you, you got a 6.0, 6.0 suck. They have all kinds of issues. Good luck with it. You're gonna have to spend so much money on the thing, blah, blah, blah. Fair enough, if you wanna do that, go ahead. But here's the thing. I have done quite a bit of research into both 7.3s and 6.0s. And yes, when I started looking in January, it is now October, um, I was primarily only looking at 7.3s. I 
only really kind of switched my mind up. Um, I wouldn't say switched my mind. I only really opened my mind up to the idea of a 6.0 a couple of months ago when I got put on to uh, PowerStrokeHelp.com's videos. Those guys have some really, really informative stuff, and I really learned a lot about 7.3s and 6.0s. Before buying this, I was still open to a 7.3, but this just came along and happened to be perfect. Now I can talk about why I don't care that it's a 6.0. So the 7.3 I've had a little bit of experience with just because my F250 that I owned for a month, <laughs> um, that was a 7.3 and the 7.3 is really a dinosaur. It is an extremely old motor. I don't know when they started production, but it was in like the 90s or whatever. So it's old technology. Um, it's pretty underpowered, but yes, it is very, very reliable because of that. But for longer road trips and stuff, it's super noisy. Um, I mean, I don't know what they're like in stock form. I'm sure they are a lot quieter than mine was. Um, but it's an old motor and it's not super powerful. The 6.0 is just more powerful it's quieter a little bit more refined but also has giant downfalls so i imagine if you know anything about power strokes you probably already know why the 6.0 was kind of sucky it had a whole bunch of issues cooling problems blown head gaskets etc etc um, but i am happy to say that pretty much most of the issues that could arise from a 6.0 have been taken care on this truck within the past 10,000 miles so everybody knows the famous term bulletproofed um, that is just the marketing term for bulletproof diesel it's not actually bulletproof but pretty much that entails taking care of all of the issues on the truck that um, could arise in the future this has some of them not all of them so it's not completely bulletproofed um, but there are certain things that you don't need to do um, it's probably a good idea to do all of them just for the peace of mind, but it's not a necessity. So I'll run you through everything that's done to this truck really quickly. All right, uh, there's not a whole lot for me to kind of show you in here because I can't get to any of it, but this truck has been like halfway bulletproofed. Um, the only thing that it doesn't have is studs. Um, and yes, I know a lot of people think that that is like the main thing that you're supposed to do. Um, but here's the thing, if you're not tuning the truck or you're not towing like huge loads, um, and really pushing it, it's not a huge necessity. The reason that the head gaskets blow and that the head bolts are a problem is because of some of the cooling issues. Um, like the EGR cooler ends up getting clogged up, the oil cooler gets clogged up etc there's no coolant filter blah 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 all of that stuff leads to it overheating and then at which point the head bolts cannot withstand the pressure and the head gaskets blow provided you take care of all of the other issues and then you're not doing things to uh, really put huge pressure on the motor you should be okay in theory um, i have definitely done a decent amount of research into it and seen that there are plenty of people out there that have done all of the things that this truck has done besides studs um, and been totally fine for hundreds of thousands of miles. So this car does have an EGR Delete. Um, I know some people go with the EGR Cooler. It's really one's better for emissions. Um, EGR Delete just deletes it entirely. Uh, it has the oil cooler, which is obviously a huge thing to take care of. It has a coolant filter. Um, the Fickham is still stock. It seems to be okay for the time being. I'm sure at some point it's gonna to need to be taken care of. But yeah, for the most part, everything has been done besides studs. So at some point, I feel like I probably will do the studs um, just for the peace of mind. Do I feel like I need it? No, not really. But um, it would be good to say that it's done regardless. By no means am I a diesel or power stroke specialist whatsoever, so I'm really just going off of the stuff that I've been able to research um, and just telling you the things that are done on this. Um, I'm sure there's some things that I've forgotten, but there's tons of other brand new parts that are in this thing too. Um, and so I'm pretty confident in it probably being fine um, for the next 60 to 70,000 miles without really having to do a whole lot to it besides oil changes. Okay, so mileage. Everybody is probably going to ask. We are at 196,642 miles. So yeah, this is actually lower miles than I had been looking at. Um, 7.3s, of course, you can be fairly confident in them to run, you know, a lot 
higher miles and not have any issues. So I'd looked at 250 to 300 range, um, provided that like ball joints have been done and the trans has been serviced or replaced or rebuilt, um, and obviously the injectors. Um, this truck, I'm happy with everything that has been done to it at this mileage, um, so I'm pretty confident in this for sure. So the interior is super, super nice. All of this wood grain is actually in really good condition. Um, even on the doors, it's pretty impressive. Um, the seats, let me show you this. This is insane. These seats are usually completely torn apart from people sliding in and out. Um, these are probably the best condition seats I've seen in an excursion or any kind of Super Duty of this year. Uh, as you can tell, Eddie Bauer Edition has this like two-tone interior kind of interesting um, seats are super comfortable these armrests are amazing still has the factory stereo in it I'm just using an FM transmitter right now before I'm able to put a, a double din in here and probably go through and do some of the sound system they uh, they look almost brand new um, the uh, the back I pulled out the third row because I needed it for all the extra space but tons and tons of room back there this even has the entertainment system back here. I don't think it works any longer, but uh, it's kind of cool to see. Anyway, separate like AC and whatever controls back here. That's kind of cool. I'm sure if you know excursions at all, you probably don't care about any of this information because you've, you've seen an excursion before. But um, for people who are on my channel and have not seen an excursion and wanted to know uh, why I would have something this big, pretty much, um, I need to pile a truck up with all of my stuff for my booth, all of the merchandise, the tent, everything, and it makes me nervous having a pickup because it's easy for someone to just steal that stuff. And also, I mean, yes, you can buy a bed cap. Um, it's fairly expensive, but yes, you could buy a bed cap. But here's the thing. Most trucks have been owned by like you know construction companies whatever businesses they've been fleet trucks um, or they're just work trucks they're beaters and the nice thing with excursions is for the most part most of them are owned by families and used for road trips and like we'll tow a camper but that's it like they're rarely ever used as like super hard work trucks and so most of them are better taken care of of like f-250s and 350s are but yeah, I am completely in love with this truck. It drives fantastic, um, it looks great, and I really cannot complain with the, the deal that I got on it. Now also, if you're a subscriber, you'll notice that this thing is two-tone, and uh, it's not the only two-tone vehicle I own. It wasn't the only reason that I bought this truck and I wasn't specifically looking for one in this color, but it was a huge, huge plus if I could find one that was white gray two-tone because my Lexus LS400, my 2000 model is white gray two-tone and I really wanted a matching tow rig. Um, I'm sorry if that is lame. I think that that's the coolest shit ever. So this thing come spring next year when the car is finished up is gonna look so sick towing my Lexus. But yeah guys, that is pretty much it. Um, expect to see this on the channel a whole bunch. Uh, I have a few little things that I'm gonna do here and there to uh, just kind of modernize it a little bit, just things for convenience um, and a few little aesthetic things to make it look a little better. For the most part, it's an incredibly clean truck. Um, it really doesn't require a whole lot of work and especially not in the cosmetic department because it's in great shape. A few other things I do want to take care of, um, I will be replacing this grill. Um, I hate this. I'm not sure why this is paint matched and this is like paint matched to this. Guy is getting a chrome grill. Uh, the headlights need to be replaced. I want to get the one piece ones from the newer models. Um, these are kind of oxidized a little bit and I tried to fix them and just wasn't having it. Um, also, the hood has some, some rock chips in it, which I don't expect any different from a truck of its age, but I'm gonna have my painter respray that. Um, and then there's some, uh, some paint missing on this bumper. But my plan is to actually take all of the cladding and wrap it the same silver that's on the Lexus. I've already found a color that matches really well. So yeah, those little bits right there are just gonna get sanded down, primered, and then we'll wrap over everything. 
And that's pretty much it. Besides that, um, it really just needs some good toe mirrors because the factory mirrors on these are really not great. Um, but other than that, I'm fairly happy with it. I don't feel like I want to do anything crazy. Um, maybe at some point I'll do wheels, but at the same time, I don't want to do anything that's going to affect the drivability. This is a a work truck for me. Um, not that I'm going to destroy it, but I want to keep it nice and usable and clean. That being said, I will never lift this thing. Please do not ask me to lift it. Lifted trucks are fucking ugly. Um, if anything, I would lower it. But yeah, guys, that is about going to do it for this video. Um, I'm so stoked that I have this thing. This now opens up a whole lot more opportunities for me to be able to grow my brand and my business. Um, next year, the plan is that I'm going to be traveling out to a lot of events. Um, I'm going to be picking and choosing events. It's not going to be like events every single weekend, but I do want to travel as much as possible, get out there, um, get the brand out in front of as many people's eyes as possible. Um, crazy booth cars at different shows. Um, we need to really up the uh, media game. I want to get back into doing proper, proper videos. Um, it's been a few years, but this truck is going to help make things a lot easier. So I'm super excited about it. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, um, maybe subscribe if you like cars that are half an inch off the ground and are completely useless. Um, but if not, maybe don't. But thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in another video, probably working on the LS sometime this week. Thanks guys, bye.